When you take on responsibility for a team and you say, it's because of me that you have this, you're disempowering your team and in a way you're pitting their ability mm -hmm. to go out and do something else. And so when you say, we're in this together, I'm gonna do my best. And if for some reason, this does not work out for us, you're so highly capable and talented, you're gonna land on your feet. I am not responsible for your future success. I'm responsible for the time that we have working here together and I will do right by that. Jasmine, welcome to the Earn Your Happy podcast. I'm Lori, so excited you're here. I am so, I think we should do this every week. You know, we just, we need to make this happen. This is, now don't be surprised when I reach out next week and say, I, I'll say yes. Doing? I'll say when. <laughs> I was like, let's walk the dogs, record a podcast, work out. So we officially are like, we feel like we are co hosts. But yes. I want to talk about that idea for anybody who um, is out there thinking about. The I fact love it. That maybe their job or what they're doing right now it, as an entrepreneur feels lonely. Yes. Or feels exhausting. Yes. Or they're not having as much fun. Yes. Because am I right that that idea kind of came out of you being like, is there a better way to do this? Is there a more fun way for me to do Absolutely. my podcast? Okay, Absolutely. Tell me about that. So we launched the podcast at the top of 2020, or mm -hmm. I think at the very end of 2019. Okay. And had been podcasting solo. So I'll do interviews and then you do solo episodes and we focused on three main topics and I thought it's been good. Right. It's been great actually. But I also realized that I wanted to do something with somebody mm. and I don't necessarily think I want a permanent co-host. And so I asked myself, I'm a big believer in how do I get to yes? Mm. How do I get to something that looks in my life and is like, that's not a yes, it's a hell yes. Mm. And so I started asking myself, how might I have a podcast host without having to change the nature of my podcast? Without really having a podcast host. Yeah, it's like, so it's like me and non-committal. It actually took me <laughs> nine years to marry my husband. So I'm a slow mover, leave me alone. Maybe in nine years, I'll actually get a co-host, but this is my slow baby yeah, steps towards it. Absolutely. And so, you know, it, it, unexpectedly, when after we podcast together, I had like a deep dive diagnostic with the mm. team and I said, there was something magical that happened here with me co-hosting. And so mm. do you mind if I share that? I don't think I told it to you. No, I want to hear everything. So the, the magical thing that had happened was getting somebody to come on your podcast is hard in and of itself when you have very busy guests. Totally. But what we inadvertently were doing, we're having one person come on two podcasts, mm. the Jasmine Star Show and Earn Your Happy. So that was almost somebody having the ability to double dip. Yeah. And then um, an another thing that had happened had been this really unique way for me to get access to people in your sphere mm. that I would never have access to. So you went into your network, introduced your network. You've essentially vouched for me. Mm -hmm. And by osmosis, I became cool because of you. And so not only did we uh, give the guest high value, double mm -hmm. dipping in their podcast, I got access to new people and new networks in new ways that I was really blown away for. Mm. And the guests that you had, Lori, all of them flew in. Yeah. Like flew in for the podcast. Mm. And I told the team, I was just like, there's something really incredible that people are flying from different places to get to Newport Beach, which is not that easy to get to. No. And they found that extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I just felt like there was three big major things that I said, I loved this day. I loved this project. And how might we do more of that? So I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't think of a better thing. And I'm a pretty hard critic, like with myself, with my team. I'm like, how do we pursue excellence? Yeah. Not excellence, but how do we pursue excellence? And at the end of the day, we like to work in like uh, one to 10. You know, mm -hmm. what do we give this experiment, this project? And I said, hard liver happens. This was a 10 out of 10 for oh me. God, that makes everything me so felt happy. in flow. Everything mm. felt organized. I think that people came, they really felt seen and known. Mm -hmm. And then us sitting outside and eating lunch with the crew, all of it just felt like it was in flow. And then I just felt so comfortable with you as an introvert. Mm. We got to the end of the day and we're like, Hey, um, we thought maybe we'll go to dinner. We were kind of like, let's leave it up in the air. T Traditionally, two of us were like, so good let's just like put it out. We'll see how we feel at the end of it with no attachments and no expectations from each other, right? Yeah. So we get to the end of the day and unfortunately, one of our guests got mm. caught in the airport, couldn't make it to the end. So we ended up um, ending our day about an hour early. Mm -hmm. It was my nephew's last football game. I said, Lori, I unexpectedly have the opportunity to go to his last football game we're cool, right? And you're like, we're cool. I'm gonna go eat dinner with the dogs. And I was like, awesome. I unexpectedly so, have the opportunity to go not talk. For exactly, the rest of after the night. talking all day. And so to me, I was just like, what a really great balance of mm. like personal fulfillment, professional fulfillment, and then just deep diving with the person and a human I deeply respect and I mm. love. And so you showing up for me in big ways empowers me to do that for other people. So thank you. Oh, I just, it was 
honestly the most fun day. Oh, I'm still lovely. reeling from it. Mm. And we don't even have the content out yet. No, which we don't. Is <laughs> like, like we did, that was supposed to be the hard work part. And I was like, that was the really right. fun part. Right. And all of these different, I've had a few experiences kind of like that, not one that like, that was just a really impactful day for me. But it's making me rethink a lot of how I do everything. Good. Just like, because, let's go there. Let's go there. Like, what do you mean? Um, just even with this podcast that we're doing yeah. right now, like, how could I get maximum, you know, value yeah. and also maximum, like, connection time and content out mm -hmm. of all the things we're doing and make sure that I'm still in a lot of joy mm -hmm. and also just really really making sure that I am aligning the guests that I truly want Ooh. and not just because good uh, because what I did on your show is I I only was going to book people who I knew the energy it was guaranteed mm -hmm. like I knew the energy would be a hundred percent like and then some with yes. like the magic and I think what I do sometimes on this show is it's easy for me to get caught up in like who they are or what they've okay. done or could this be good or is this someone that people want to hear from. And as great as that can be sometimes, it it doesn't ensure that the energy is going to be great at all. Right. In fact, it's like more when I follow, oh, I had a moment with that person. I can tell we're going to click and it's yes. going to be really good content. So I think to follow that more than worrying about who they are absolutely that was a big thing for me I think the biggest takeaway for me was um, it showed me energetically what was possible mm. and in 2024 I want the projects I take on to feel like that yeah and I'm like I now experienced it I tasted the Dom Perignon of experiences and I'm like if it's not Dom I don't want it in my <laughs> life and I know that sounds like oh how fortuitous that you get to say that we all do mm -hmm. may we all have the taste of something to say that's really good how do I re replicate that? And so mm -hmm. thank you for that. Thank you for setting the mm -hmm. bar high. And 2024 is like, it's getting to that. Mm -hmm. Can I can I focus all of my energy on those types of projects? Because then I walk away lit up, mm -hmm. people are served really well, and then we're excited about the stuff we continue to create. Okay, so that makes me want to ask you, what are you rethinking right now to have more of those experiences in your life for 2024? Uh, rethinking the depths in which I go in the projects that I am involved with. So mm -hmm. um, I think I am at my best when I am not 50,000 feet in the air, but not five feet from the ground. Mm. It's like, there's a lot of times I felt myself uh, leading up through 2023. It's like, okay, high view of the businesses, what's going on. And then really I would find myself in the weeds. Mm. Like, why am I doing this right now? And I would find myself so frustrated doing tasks I should not have been doing because mm. I was good at them. Uh. Sure. Like, yeah, I'm great at looking at content and saying, Hey, what works here? and What doesn't work here? That is not the best use of my time. Mm. Um, I'm really great at going through outlining deep dive podcast and frameworks, but that's not what I should be doing. Mm. I should be in creation mode and then giving the team the ability to go out and deploy against it. And I think I started testing with that. So this project for bringing on a co-host, I was like, okay, this is the idea. I'm like, I'll get the co-host, but I want to be out. I want to be out of everything. I want the co-host mm. to curate the guests. And then I want the team to take such great care of those guests so that the co-host and myself don't have to do anything but show up on that day. So like before this, you had been a big part of that. Yes. You would have put yourself in it. Oh, a hundred percent. Because okay, I wanted I that, that. I wanted that personal touch. I wanted everybody to feel seen, known and heard. And then it was like, I was putting myself as the most important player and I'm not. Mm. The team is so much better at facilitating those things. And, um, for me now, what I want to do is I want to stay really high. I want to mm. say this as a CEO is what I think we should be doing. And this mm. is what I want to do. So here's the objectives. Here's how we win. Here's how we know we're on the right track. Let's go mm. team. And I've just haven't really dwelt in that space for long enough periods of time to actually flex that muscle. Who knows what 2024 is going to bring, mm. but that's my new standard. It's like when I get out of the way and work with a phenomenal team, they get it done. Okay, so I hear such a theme of like how I like to run my business now because I did not yes. always run it that way. Yes. And it really affects your mood and your well-being and your stress level and your anxiety. And I know that you and I have shared together that like we can tend to really have to watch our mental state yes. and our moods and yes. all of the things. Um, do you feel like that's had a major impact on how you feel? Because you haven't 
been able to like be in your zone of genius absolutely in other ways so what have you noticed getting out of that well I felt like okay uh the end of 2022 Mm -hmm. I actually wrote this in a newsletter so I create most of my own copy most if not all of my own copy so deep dive I feel like that is my place of power and that's Mm -hmm. what I want to do more of because it's my voice and my thoughts and my frameworks Mm -hmm. at the end of 2022 I wrote in a newsletter that it felt like life had gathered up a pile of steaming poo put it in a blender and then handed me in a cup and a straw and said drink up (laughs) that's legitimately how I felt at the end of 2022 Mm. and so then starting 2023 I didn't even have it in me Lori to write down goals for the year Mm. and that like I don't even know in it like over a decade in my career not not me I I love writing goals even if we hit them or not I just love the idea the practice of the seeing of um, what we're capable of I love that I couldn't even I went 2023 without having clear goals it was just there's some things I want to do I don't have it in me I'm just mm. exhausted from thinking about all the things. Mm. And I put myself there. I was flexing between the 50,000 feet and the five foot view. And the only way that I can stay in my place of power is if I stay above it all. Mm. And so then 2024 came back around of saying, um, I can control how I feel when mm. I can stay in my place of power. And a lot of times it's just me getting out of my own way. Now I know people are listening and maybe they have teams and then maybe they don't. And it feels like, oh, that's so nice. That's so nice for you to say that. Well, we have both been in times where we were our only team. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we know every aspect of all the things that we're expecting a team to do. And then at the time of this recording, my team is very small. It's seven people and we are tiny, but mighty. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind people that you will never be able to effectively manage somebody without knowing what it is you want them to do. And so in the middle of you doing all the things, appreciate that at one time there will be somebody to replicate you or uh, replace you in that role. But now Mm -hmm. you know how to assess what do I need from this person because you did that yourself. Mm -hmm. And so depending on wherever you are in your journey, understanding your place of power, finding as quick a way as possible to get you out of things that don't serve you well, Mm -hmm. hiring somebody who's highly capable, and then really staying and doing what it is you do best. Mm. If somebody's listening right now and they are thinking that maybe they don't have the money for it, but they possibly do. Um, Mm -hmm. What, what would you say is a good place to get started to start getting things off of your plate? Um, So, okay. I, I grew up very poor. And Mm -hmm. so money for me is this, it might, it's my emotional chew toy, right? So when somebody is just like, I can't afford it. I'm like, oh yeah, me too. It is like a default wherever I am in my journey. It's like, oh yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. However, When I started saying, um, I I worked with a therapist and he walked me through this idea of a neutralizing thought Mm. where so often we want to say, I want to have, like, I want to be positive. I want to be happy all the time. I want to think that anything is possible, but if it doesn't feel real, our Mm. brain will not be able to like sick it, sick, sink its teeth into it. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're on a journey of losing weight and then you tell yourself, I love myself. I feel great. I'm amazing. And you don't feel that way. That is not a a belief that we can hold on to. Mm. However, if you were to say, I'm on the journey of getting to where I want to go. And every day I'm going to be focused on my goals. That is something that is true and real. So the brain and the mind get to map to those ambitions. Mm. So in the workplace, if you say, I don't have enough money to hire somebody, that might feel like your truth, but then it doesn't allow any other creative pathways for you to get that money. Mm. But if you say, I have all the money in the world and I can hire anybody, but that doesn't feel true, you're still not going to pull the trigger. So I'm going to encourage people who are listening to find a neutralizing thought. Mm. And that neutralizing thought is, are there things in my business that I can let go of that I know definitively I could pay somebody a reasonable amount of money to get it off my plate. And I am telling you, we could start off with three hours a week. Can you hire somebody at a reasonable rate? You could determine what that rate is for three hours a week. Can you do that? That's a neutralizing thought. You're not like, oh, I need to get a full-time employee with benefits and a 401k. Not at all. You need to slowly flex the muscle of saying there is something in my business that I don't need to do. The faster you start abdicating those responsibilities, along a measurement of I can pay somebody $18 an hour, but in that hour I can actually make $19. Mm. The minute you could say that, pass it off. The minute Mm. you're $1 above what you're paying that person one hour to do, pass it off. And I think that has been pretty um, like mind shaping for me is, you know, we hire like, so I hired an executive assistant with the goal of God willing, fingers crossed, this person becoming a chief of staff. Mm. And I just think, can she 
bring in one more dollar than what we're paying her to take a thousand things off my plate? And beyond a shadow of a doubt, the answer isn't yes, it's hell yes. And when I look at, oh my gosh, this is so expensive, I always think to myself, well, well great. She's gonna become a money generator because I'm now free to do the things that are in my lane. I create mm -hmm. projects, I create money. Mm -hmm. And the more that I'm in the weeds, the less I'm able to do the other things. Was that like a, for the shift for you to happen of, okay, let's bring some people in, let's really let go of this. Mm -hmm. What had to happen for you in your head? Was it a worthiness thing? Was it thinking people couldn't do it as good as you? What was that shift? Oh, wow, Lori, we're getting into like deep therapy. Um, <laughs> It wasn't worthiness. It wasn't enoughness. It was responsibility. Mm. I felt deeply, so uh, a first generation Latina, first in my family to go to mm -hmm. college, first in my family to go to law school or any postgraduate. And so growing up, there is a 14 year difference between myself and my youngest sister. Mm. And my, when I was a junior in college, my mom was diagnosed with brain cancer. And so we lived, and so I have a twin sister. We went to the same college. We were actually roommates. I know, we're like those twins. <laughs> and we found ourselves going home quite often because we were making dinner for the family, setting them up for the next day, doing laundry, keeping the house afloat while my mom was in bed. And mm -hmm. so deep, like in those like really formative teen years, like I am a mini mom of many sorts, like taking my brother to basketball practice, coming back mm -hmm. home, finishing work. I was a waitress. And so there's a lot of stuff going on. And I felt like you can't drop it. You can't drop anything. And so I think that people in college, if you had met me in college, you would see like a nice, high functioning Latina robot. It was like, mm -hmm. nothing is out of place ever because you're responsible. Mm -hmm. And I carried that for the vast majority of my life. And I didn't know but I was making decisions from that fractured place of having a team it means I, m I cannot let anybody down. It is all on you mm -hmm. and like their jobs, their livelihood. And the, the, the undoing of that, the undoing of that was when you take on responsibility for a team and you say, it's because of me that you have this, mm -hmm. you're disempowering your team. And in a way you're pitting their, pitting their ability mm -hmm. to go out and do something else. And so when you say, we're in this together, I'm gonna do my best. And if for some reason, this does not work out for us, you're so highly capable and talented, you're gonna land on your feet. I am not responsible for your future success. I'm responsible for the time that we have working here together and I will do right by that. And that mm -hmm. was like a big shift for me. Oh God, we, we talk, I think we talked about this on your podcast that when you sign up for being an entrepreneur or starting a business, like it is the biggest personal development oh, course yeah. of your life. Absolutely. So what has been revealed to you? I feel like you're in a much different, more empowered place right now, which mm -hmm. I've always felt like you were, but I feel very, like mm -hmm. very dis different, fiery, purposeful, mm -hmm. aligned energy from you right now. Mm -hmm. What do you what lesson was like a really big takeaway for you that you're moving forward with over the last few years to get you here? Um, the lessons you don't learn find themselves repeated in your life until mm -hmm. you learn them. Yeah. And so I feel <laughs> like, uh, and so I feel like 2023 was a moment for me to reconcile. Mm. It's okay to burn the boats. Mm. In fact, burn the freaking boats. And, and so there's like, there's a, fra there's like a, a, there's a famous like quote, or maybe even it's a book is that when you, like, when you take the boat to the island and you get on the island, burn the boats because you have to survive on the island. Mm -hmm. When you see the boats in the harbor or in the dock, it means there's a way out. You yes. can go back to who you once were or where you were once from. When you burn the ship, you have to make it work. And I think that in my life, I was like uh, moving from one project to the next, right? It's a little bit scary. I'm mm -hmm. like, I can kind of see the distance of a thing. And then I'd go over there and it almost feels like I'm a cat. I'm landing on all fours. I got this, let's go. And then you get to a point and here comes the lesson. And the lesson was in 2023 is burn the freaking boat. Mm. You outgrew the boat. You got yourself to a different island. Survive here. And I think that I was in this tenuous balance of like, but what happens if then, when I let go, what happens here, what happens there? And then it's all of a sudden, it's just like, you're no longer serving yourself, staying in a small box. And I had to learn that. I still have to learn the lesson, but I think that that was like the, the metamorphosis for me. So in 2023, my word of the year was rebirth. Mm. And I actually had to be reborn. I am a different person. I am a different entrepreneur. And I feel more safe and secure in 2024 
with less clarity of the next big move in my life than I did in 2023 because instead of having my hands clenched around something, they're just open, ready to receive. Mm. And I think that that's the energetic shift. What would you say to somebody who is, they know they're one foot in, they know they're one foot out. They know that they're leaving that window cracked and they left the boat there because they're like, no, no, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go escape over there. What Mm -hmm. happens within that energy and what would you say to them? Um, The boat is a facade. Mm -hmm. If you're straddling the line, you think you can go back to the land in which you hailed or the person you once were, but you've seen too much. You know too much. So you look at the boat like it's a ticket off the island, Mm. but when you get on the boat, it is covered with algae. Mm. It's no longer gonna get you back to where you were. So it's a misnomer. So take Mm. the power and burn the ship because when you know you don't have another option, you make it work. And the Mm. longer you straddle the line, the more deceitful you are for your potential to succeed. Mm. That one made me cheery. Like that hit because that is so true. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people, that is the most painful place I think for people to be is straddling the fence because you think you can go back, but exactly like you said, in my life, you can, you cannot go back. You will be miserable and you you will will destroy every relationship in your life. And I think it's, you will blame it on them. Absolutely. And it's you. Absolutely. Yeah. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. My God. Okay. Where am I? Who am I? What's next? Okay. So (laughs) (laughs) that one got me. I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So let's talk about what that has opened up for you this this next year because I know mm-hmm. that you're working on some things that you you're like one of the most passionate business women I know because I'm we obsessed. geek out Laura like we talk yes. like we are those people that if given anything in the world to talk about we talk about business and then like, when we want to take a break about talking about business we're just like okay but back to business <laughs> so yeah um, absolutely this is what we do it's our love language <laughs> that is why I'm like okay so first of all. You're, you're so passionate about it, but obviously you had lost it for a little bit, but talking about getting back into your joy and into your zone yeah. of genius and really what that looks like. And so now we're there and you've created some other things Absolutely. that we can also come along with. So Absolutely. tell me about what you're, what you're moving forward doing that you're excited about. So um, in, as part of the rebirth process, and so to be clear, I am still an active CEO for a social character. We have other businesses. In 2023, it came back down to what arms of the business are not serving us and what mm. do we need to downsize? Those are big things. I think I've always loved business, but the thing that part of the lesson, part of burning the boat meant divorcing myself from what the business is meant mm. about me. And I think that as entrepreneurs, in a way, people always say, oh, the business is my baby. Like, I love it. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I can identify with that. But then when things were going well in the business or I didn't feel like I was being served in the way I would think, like, but what does this mean about me? Mm -hmm. And so I think that by being able to step back and being able to say, what is it that I'm really good at and what lights me up? And what will people pay me for? And how do I serve the world in my purpose? That's like a Mm -hmm. traditional Japanese phrase called ikigai. It's like four concentric circles in that middle thing. And Mm -hmm. I just spent 2023 asking myself, what is that thing? And I don't have a clear answer, I will say. But what I will say is that life leaves like breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you're like, no, 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 of course not. No. And then you ask yourself, can I experiment? Mm -hmm. And so starting 2024 with an experiment that I'm really excited about and If we go back to 2023, I made the active decision to say, this is bonus energy. Mm. This is bonus energy. I want to create something that's going to light me up. I want to serve people really well. I want to teach people how to make money. Mm. I want to have fun. I want to connect with other people. And because, shout out God, the other Mm. businesses are doing great, (laughs) that I'm not dependent on this thing. I don't have to put pressure on a passion project for it to work. And I'm like, oh, it was birthed out of this new thing that I'm going to have fun with. Bonus energy. I don't need to win in a way that I classify winning. I just need to do it. And whatever happens, I've won. Mm -hmm. That's the preconceived notion of what it will be. It is said, and so it is done. I'm going to have fun, and it's going to be freaking amazing. Now, to be fair, we haven't launched it yet. How do I know that? Well, you get to apply a label on anything you do in your life. Mm. And so if what we do, the projects, the business that we build, we think of this as a box coming off a conveyor line. And so here's this new box, I get to put a label on it, Mm. a predetermined label, this is gonna be a success. Whatever I get from it, when I open this box, even if it's not what I expected or I wanted in Mm. this box, it's already a success. And so I'm putting this over this project. And this project came about in 2023. I hosted my first mastermind. Mm. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with women who are six and seven figure business owners. And I thought we would be talking about X. And then what we ended up talking about a lot of was Y. Y was launching. 
How are you launching? What is the mechanism of launching? And I'm assuming there are seven figure, figure business owners and I'm like, well, you know. And then they would ask very, very specific mm. questions to where I was like, wait, you don't know. Mm. Oh, interesting. I'm like, we can make a few tweaks that would have a wild impact on show up rates, conversions, closings. What mm. is the CTA? Like, where are we at in this journey? And I started realizing, oh, well, maybe this is the entrepreneur, the, the, the entrepreneur kind of like inflection point. Hmm. And I, it, people kept on saying, well, can we, can I set up a call and can we talk about this? And I'm like, okay. And then I found myself repeating the same things. There was like hmm. the same patterns that people were following, following into. And I was like, okay, it's, it is what it is. The mastermind. Well, I am a part of a mastermind of tech founders and hmm. um, it's like a 2000 person group, but you have a cohort. Each hmm. cohort is about eight to 10 people. I'm the only girl in a cohort, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And most, if not all of them are VC backed. In fact, 90% of the group is VC backed. Wow. So they come from a very different world of mm -hmm. how they're generating money. And so they come from the world of we generate money and then we hire agencies to deploy against everything. We keep on deploying against the big vision, which is very different for bootstrapped companies like myself, right? So yeah. my husband, JD and I, we have bootstrapped social curator amongst other businesses. And so it, our business only works when we get paid. Like right. no investors, no loans. And so yeah. uh, back in June of 2023, we had a launch for Social Curator. And I laid out the launch and then I laid out the manifestations of the launch. Mm -hmm. And the guys were like, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Like, I I'm sorry. They're like, no, no, no. How did you get that many leads? How did you get that conversion? Wait, what are you talking about? Mm. And so we have a SaaS offering and they have SaaS offerings and they're like, We've never done it that way. And so they're like, what is this magic you speak of? And I'm like, oh, this is just digital marketing. I mean, and so then they had said, can we hire your team to do this for our business? And I thought to myself, there is another business here. But then I realized I don't want to be an agency. That's not my power play. Right. That is not at all what I want to do. And so I started asking myself, is there a better way? Is there an easy way for me to like not have to repeat the same conversations. Mm -hmm. The clear problem is I have an offer and I need more attention on the offer mm -hmm. and you need a clear mechanism of closing offers in a short amount of, in a specific amount of time. And I'm like, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I could break down the last eight years and I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars I've paid for consultants. I'm figuring out our methodology of launching and really excited because we're partnering with other SaaS companies mm -hmm to make it as easy as possible for somebody to plug and play the launch model so that they can get their course, their membership, their SaaS offering, launching a podcast or a product. We believe in this mechanism of getting attention, getting conversions, and then growing the business thereafter. Mm. Okay, so that came out of people being really curious about what yes. you're doing yes. and something that you didn't even realize you were sitting on that was such a skill because why? You thought everybody knew this. Y yeah. I, mean, yeah. I figure I'm like, well, you you have seven, eight figure businesses. Yeah. Of course you know this. And that is a big, I think that's the biggest lesson. Like people mm -hmm. are listening, like you assume that other people know what it is you do. Even if you know what you do is special and it's cool, mm -hmm. you assume more people know it than you do, mm -hmm. than they do. Okay. I want to touch on that really fast because I think as women, especially when we go into these rooms and you're one of the only women in this room because mm -hmm. tech is like essentially all male. Yes. Great. But when we go into these rooms, whether it's like, you know, a woman joining an all female mastermind, whatever it is, I think one of the biggest mistakes we make is to not talk about what we do well or not brag on ourselves or not mm. share where we're actually at. Like, I don't know about you, but the first year I was in a mastermind, I was like a quiet mouse and nobody even knew who I was at the first one I went to. And I was like, what was I, why did I do that? So can you tell me about like how you are now able to talk about yourself and like, what does it feel like when you do it? Does it feel good or is it still weird? How did you get the confidence to make sure that you're seen in these rooms? I don't, you know what, Lori, I don't know if I'm there yet. I'll just okay. be honest. I wish I was like, okay, let me tell you how I do. I wear my big hoops and I go on a guys, listen, no, I am still, I am still that quiet mouse. Mm. I've always as a child. So I grew up, this is another thing that we share. So like, I grew mm. up very overweight. So I was obese as a child. I weighed more than my dad. I shopped in the extra plus section when I was 11 years old. And I think that as a result of being a daughter of an immigrant, we grew up really mm -hmm. poor. I was very overweight. I didn't want people to notice me. Right. I was want actively attention. wanting to be the wallflower. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden in life, um, I still hold on to those wallflower tendencies, even mm -hmm. though I don't want to, even though I know that they don't serve me, I have always been the observer. So I would, I will walk into a room and then I watch how is the game being played? Mm. And then I watch, 
who do I feel safe with? Who's here for what? I do quick mental calculations mm -hmm. and then I figure out, okay, this is how I'm the same and this is how I'm different. Mm. And then probably for the first 20% of anything, 20% of a cocktail mixer, 20% of a gala, 20% of a mastermind meeting, it's going to be shut up and watch what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And it's only then when I feel like I know what to say and how to say it. And I will say that I've come a long way being able to say what it is I know, mm -hmm. but I'm not so forthcoming on the front end of it still. Mm -hmm. So how I did, so I'm gonna express appreciation for understanding how I could speak better of myself. And um, for me, I don't say this as a general rule of thumb. For me, I became very empowered when I got very specific with knowing my numbers. Mm. And I started realizing that in male dominated spaces, they went down to distinctly, what is the business doing? What is the cost of customer acquisition? What is the LTV? What is, I mean, all of these data points that I kind of sorta ish knew, but I didn't have a way to distill them all together. So now I have a numeric map of everything. Like honestly, Lori, if you were to put me in a pitch room, no, I'm not mm. looking for venture capital, but if you were, I feel like, pretty dang confident that I could mm. pitch, know my numbers, convey a future vision, and explain exactly what I need and why the business is evaluated the way that it would be, even without mm. outside evaluation, because I know our numbers mm -hmm. backwards and forward. And because I know that, I think that any question that anybody asks me ever about the business, I can confidently look at them and say, I know what I'm doing, and I know that I can be an entrepreneur and play this game because mm -hmm. I know this, I am empowered. And I think that that is, in fact, just a couple of days ago, I had a consulting session with an entrepreneur and she's incredible, like powerful, doing amazing, incredible things. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm just going to do it to you straight. They're going to look at you and they're going to think that because you look like X, you could just put something out and say, we, it's <laughs> out there. They think that of you. Mm. So get your numbers before mm -hmm. you meet with this group. Get your numbers in order, know them backwards and forward and understand that while you could, if you wanted to say we, mm. when you launch, you know that behind the we is a woe. So mm. go on. We will. We will. <laughs> we will. We go from we to woe. We will. Yes. Um, okay. I, I love hearing this, the, the different perspectives as well, because I think a lot of, I think a lot of people listening from just the different rooms that I've, I've been in, it's such an intimidation factor in the beginning of being in those rooms, but you can still be quiet Absolutely. and you can still be successful yes. and you can go and you can, you were reminding me of how I've done a lot of just learning in these different rooms is like just being a listener. If I don't have things to add yet, I'm not going to add them Amen. confidently. Amen. <laughs> like, no, no, we're good. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm just here to listen right now. And then I can go try them in the safety of my own team yes. or a small launch yes. or whatever yes. that looks like to go try it on until I actually have data where I can go into the room and, and give something yes. hopefully maybe valuable. Yes. Um, but there is a point now where I do feel like you do need to walk into a room and confidently say, let's let's just say one of the masterminds we were at together. Yes. Like you have to confidently say who you are and what you've done well. Like that is so scary mm -hmm. because you can't go in like, I'm kind of okay and I'm just like this or that because that's not what certain people in certain rooms are looking for. Mm -hmm. So how do you how did you get to that place and do you have a vulnerability hangover afterward? It's so funny. Um I mean, are we going to go there? Am I going to be honest? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, please lie. <laughs> uh, well, there's a way. There's a way. There's a packaging. Okay. So I don't know. The first time I heard this was like a few months ago. It's called the nice sandwich. Oh. So where if you have something like like um, to, to say that's very specific okay. or like a very strong piece of feedback that you have to sandwich it by like a nice piece of bread, feedback, nice piece of bread. Okay. And I'm just like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of uh probably because I grew up eating burritos so I'm just like it's all meat Here's baby all it's all me like just eat it like it's all one bite there's no niceness here um and so I, I think that sometimes when I'm on podcast I'm like okay is it nice sandwich time mm. um and so I think the more honest I am I I do one of two things Lori yeah I either attract people in my orbit or I repel mm. and I know that that's not for everybody but it serves me best I don't need anybody being lukewarm about how they feel I would rather somebody watch or listen to this podcast and say she is not for me yeah. I'm great with that I'm fine with that mm. and so what I'm about to say will probably put you in one of those two camps whenever we go around and do an introduction of who you are and what you do mm -hmm. it is the people who use the most words who are the most insecure or uncertain about the nature of their business mm. 
When you have to use 47 words to describe what it is you do, when the strongest in the room can do it in 15, mm. you're automatically indicating the weakness. Mm. It is our job as visionaries and CEOs to succinctly convey the problem we solve, the success rate, and for whom. Mm. And so it took me a long time to realize that. And now, um, recently, or towards the end of last year, I went to a leadership retreat, again, 35 men, and I was the only woman, and we all had to stand in a circle and talk about what it is we do. And the, the facilitator specifically said, this is not your CV, this is not a pitch, less words is more. Like, mm. the cue was given. Right. And the newer, smaller, more novice entrepreneurs were going on like it's the Gettysburg Address. And the strongest people who had done the most impressive stuff mm. had packaged. Mm. This is what we do, this is who we serve, this is our performance, this is what we want. Mm. And so how did I get to that point? By watching, mm. watching what the most successful people in the room did and then working like hell to figure out how can I show up like that even if I'm not that? How do I show up as if I am that thing? Mm. And I think I've only got that by watching for a while. This is, so this is such an important lesson. I didn't even know we were going to get this lesson, but so, so good because when you get the opportunity to be in these rooms, whatever they yes. are. Everyone can think of one who's on this podcast. It's like, boy, I would love to be in that room. Mm -hmm. How you show up matters so much. Mm. And Chris and I are actually, we're, we're, we're going to be hosting a, Those, a networking yes, event. Yes, yes. And we're, we want to teach this particular thing because oh, so, so many people get in so these rooms good. and we notice that they... They waste time, they babble on, they actually lose people yes. so quickly. They lose attention. They yes. lose attention that they should have gotten and people write them off because yes. they're over talking, they're over explaining. Yes. They are doing things that I'm like, these are these are social kind of like norms that people assume everybody knows or should learn, or these social in what's the word? In Intricate intricacies. intricacies. Yes, Thank you so yes, much. yes. That People should know and learn that that is so important in business yes. and to have your message be heard. Yep. And it's not going to be heard if you're, you're over talking. So I love that you said, what are the six, how do the successful people package it and how do they speak? And just going in to rooms like that and saying, I'm just going to show up and I'm going to learn and mm -hmm. I'm going to watch. And the most valuable thing for me is going to be from other people, not me talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is that has been huge for me moving forward in business is less words. Absolutely. So next intro, I'm just going to be like, I'm a marshmallow. <laughs> Three words, yes. <laughs> um, yes, you are a marshmallow. You're like Three delightful, words. sweet. And, I did. You know, like somebody, I mean, anyway, I was like, I was trying to make it, I was trying to extend sweet, it. I did sometimes sweet, fluffy. Sometimes, no, <laughs> never fluffy. Um, so Dale Carnegie said it best. Mm -hmm. He said, your business will go farther being genuinely interested in two other mm -hmm. people than trying to get 200 people interested in you. Mm. So the, the extension of packaging what you do and who you serve and the value you have to other people in the room. Once you do that, that is like baby step number one. Mm. And then having the power and the wherewithal that even though you can say something, doesn't mean you should say something. Because there is the difference of saying something that's been said in a different way, which adds no value. And then there is a way of saying something that's slightly different, that is a different vantage point that adds value. So always mm. in the back of your mind, ask yourself, am I saying the same thing or am I having a countering opinion or a different vantage point of the same opinion? And then a another component of elongating that is listening to what people aren't saying or maybe subtly saying. And mm. then having the ability to um, go and step away to the bar, to the bathroom, off to the side, and write down notes of things that you might be able, and ways you might be able to connect with other people. And so mm -hmm. an example of this, I was sitting at a dinner and we start talking about life and there was an entrepreneur who was probably, you know, 10 years younger than I am and he had like, talking about this girl he's in love with and how it, his business and his personal life sometimes don't ever intermix. And so then I went back and I made a note to follow up because he was mm -hmm. gonna have a big like DTR over the weekend with this girl. And mm -hmm. I'm just meeting this guy for the first time. And so I made myself a note to follow up and just send him a note and let him know that I hope that that conversation went really well. Mm -hmm. And um, another time, you and I, we were in Sundance, Utah, and we are having conversations with different people. And one of the people that we were there with had mentioned, oh, he just loves honey. Like honey is like his love language. But then he talked about how New Zealand honey is a different kind of honey. And so then I brought out my phone later and I just wrote New Zealand honey. Mm -hmm. And so then as a way to say thank you for hosting us, I just looked up what's the best New Zealand honey. Mm. And so when you do things, mm. when people aren't aware of them 
or just say, oh, I remember I overheard you talking that you needed a podcast editor. Let me put you in contact with somebody. Mm. When you care more about their business, you are creating lifelong evangelist for who you are as a founder and a business owner than trying to get them interested in helping you. They mm. will want to help you once you have done something for them that came completely unexpected. And I think mm. that doing that is a really great brand extension when mm. you're networking. Oh my God, that, that right there is like one of the most important things for building your network. Yes. Like it's, it's the long game. Yes. And people remember those, I remember all of those moments that people do and whether you actually physically remember them and they come to your brain, there is something in your brain that happens that makes a connection to that person that you're more yes. likely to think of them, yes. suggest them, want to work with yes. them again, say they're an amazing person. Yes. All of these things that really do matter in business, it all comes down, I believe, to your network and yes. what you know about the people. Oh, you're the queen of it though. Oh my gosh. Like you are the queen of building out a network in the most kind, genuine, and thoughtful ways. Well, you just gave me the best tips ever. I'm okay. like, I did not think to do little notes like that. Like um, that is so, and I forget pretty easily. So I'm like, that will be such a good thing for me oh, yeah. to just jot down. Absolutely. On your notes app. And then it syncs up with your notes on your laptop. And so sometimes Ugh. I'm there, I'm like, oh yeah, let me just do that right now. That is so good. Mm -hmm. The New Zealand honey. I remember New that Zealand honey. I know you I do. Like, wow, I know you so do. Good. So let's get back to your um, project this year. Okay. It's called Your Biggest Launch ever your biggest launch ever this is the best name by the yeah. way jasmine i'm sure you're very happy when you concluded that this was the name yes and you know oh my gosh you know i reached out to you i was like lori what are your ai secrets i'm like i need to name this thing and i and i get, i had a list of criteria okay. of the things that i wanted to and you gave really good feedback and you and i just sat with it and i'm like i want it to be so simple mm. like i want somebody to look at the title because i think in the past i've tried getting clever mm. i've tried getting cute i've done that clever and cute are great for like ideas and when you're talking with your girlfriend it's like oh my god that's so cute but if I, I think that it was so much easier for me to say if the name can distill what the offer is then I feel like we're winning mm -hmm. and so that's what I wanted to do and we kind of banged it out with the team and I felt good I felt yeah, really good yeah it's so good thank you uh, yeah I did the whole cute thing as well I, I know with, we unfortunately I did I it with a book so I was like <laughs> oh, I should have um I should have rethought that one I understand now why I was like this is so great it's about it's like a this group I used to listen to Tribe Called Quest. Yes. Like, well, nobody yeah. knows who they are. Great. Girl, I do. I do. I got you. But here's the thing. It actually, even if it was cute, you definitely at, drew a line in the sand. Be like, do you get me or not? And it's like That's Tribe Called Quest. That hey. is so yes. true. So, okay. So your biggest launch ever. Yes. What, who, why? So, <laughs> you know, um, after serving people in the mastermind, after being a part of the mastermind, I yeah. knew that there was a gap in the market. Yeah. And so I love playing to the gaps. I, I want to be very clear. This is for the entrepreneur who has something they're about to be done with or it's mm. already been on the market. And so what happens is I do best with somebody who has concrete facts. I don't do well. Like when I, like if somebody hires me for a consulting session and it's all esoteric, like mm -hmm. this idea of, and then I say, well, have you done this or tried that? And they're like, we will. Mm. I actually feel completely it's a futile conversation for me. I love when people have done something, yeah. period. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be anything you're even proud of. It's just the fact that it's done. Right. Now we have something to work with. Totally. And so to me, there are these like really small, powerful tweaks that somebody can make to their membership if they launch a course. And so this exact launch model is what we've used to launch everything since 2016. Now, of course, we've made iterations to it. We've hired consultants to figure out how do we make it better. But there are distinct mechanisms to follow that will get a better result. And so the class that we're teaching is how to create a promotional launch plan and double your revenue in 60 days. Mm. That's a big freaking promise. Mm -hmm. And at first I battled with the team because I'm like, you guys, we're saying that somebody can double the revenue in 60 days. And they just looked back at me and they were like, but that's what you did. And then all of a sudden it was somebody had to hold a mirror up and mm. say, good job. Yeah. Good job for doing something freaking otherwise. Mm -hmm incomprehensible. I never even gave, I didn't even, it makes me sad even saying this. Mm. I didn't even like myself enough to say what you did was freaking magic. Mm. I just did it because my back was against the wall. So as a photographer, um, my husband and I had built this great career. We had great income. Mm. It was amazing, but we had worked ourselves into the 1% of the 1%. And then all of a sudden we realized we're trading t like hours for dollars and there had to be something different. Mm. So I joined the mastermind and I'm sitting there and on day one, um, they go around and they explain what a hot seat is. 
I don't know what a hot seat is. I'm like, a hot seat? What is this? And essentially, if you're listening and you don't know what a hot seat is, it's like you go through with like um, the most important question you want to ask. And you want everybody in the room to speak to that one question. And so other people are in there speaking a totally different language. Like, I'm trying to increase our uh, LTV and our EPL and our conversion rate. And I'm like, what are these people saying? Like, what the heck? Yeah. And so then I get into my hot seat and I'm sitting very much in a chair like this. And I'm looking at all of these people who have built seven-figure businesses. Now, I had built a seven-figure business, mm. but we the way we had done it had been so different. I had an, a business online mm. and they had built online businesses. They were leading with this mechanism that was so foreign to me. So then all of a sudden I go in and my big question on day one, what is a webinar? <laughs> How do I do it? And yeah. then everybody in the room is like, who let her in? <laughs> like I'm looking around and they're like, it, it's such a, it is such a freaking Googleable question that they're like, are we really going to spend 20 mm. minutes here? And they, they're looking at the host and they're like, is this a joke? And so Did then, you know you had asked like a question you should know at that no, point? No, I didn't. Right. I, I was like, everybody here, totally everybody different. here must be wondering like this webinar is secret magic. It's a new thing. Um, and so uh, they were very kind but, and they had a good few starting off points. And then the next day, a woman who I'd never met before, her name was Amy Porterfield. She was the guest speaker. This is amazing. I know. And so then Amy Porterfield comes in and speaks to this group. I think there was like 16 of us. And she talks about how her courses, like what she's done in her career, she's made over $100 million using webinars to sell courses. So this is the audacity or the stupidity or the brilliance, I don't know, of me the day before saying, mm -hmm. what is a webinar? to watching a woman mm. who's done over $100 million, and then I say, I could do that. What the hell? What? Where does that even come from? And so I think, though, if I go back and I say, oh, poor you, mm. Jasmine, was it's like the, Serena's, the, the Serena and Venus William effect, mm. right? When they got signed, they were 14, 15 years old, they get signed by Nike, and all of a sudden all these young girls are looking at them saying, that too is possible. Mm -hmm. And so so many entrepreneurs, like myself at the time, I look at that and I'm like, oh, that's... That I want to launch, like I want to launch, mm -hmm. like the digital marketing version of Venus and Serena. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do this, and then all of a sudden, what we do is we say, "I see you at Wimbledon, and I see you at the U.S. Open." Mm -hmm. But what we don't see is the 15 years of eight-hour day practices, and we don't see are the losses, and we don't see the training, we don't see the sacrifice. We want the Wimbledon moment, mm -hmm. but so many of us forsake what we need to do to put in the practice. Mm -hmm. And so now, eight years later, I'm looking at Amy as a peer and as a friend. And while I am in no way, shape or form that level of launching, what I can say is we found a methodology that truly does work. We found a methodology that I pulled off in 60 days. And if somebody wants to put in that level of work to launch mm -hmm. something differently than they ever have before, then this is the answer to it. And I think that feels really great to say. It's also very scary and it's also mm -hmm. very freaking exciting. I'm so excited. I've Thank gotten you, to spend a lot of time with you in either masterminds or following you or listening to your content or listening to your podcast. You truly are one of the people who I think teaches this so well. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you're such a good teacher. Thank you. And you're so linear, which is so opposite of me. So I <laughs> love it. I'm like, keep talking. This is interesting. Um, and I love how much you love data. And I think for anybody listening who has launched their program before and is feeling a little bit lost or unsure mm -hmm. you are so powerful with empowering them by teaching them what to look at and how and not making it scary mm -hmm. so i think this is going to be so huge for the right people so who exactly just so they know again who mm -hmm. exactly is the right person for this if you have a product that can be bought digitally mm -hmm. and you know even for people who are product based like honestly for glossy Mm. I would absolutely be hosting a webinar. Mm. And that is not the way traditionally products are sold, mm -hmm. right? There's a different mechanism. But I think like in a pre-existing market, what is the best way to tap into people's attention? Now, mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody's going to be like, I want to sign up to a class so I could be sold glossy. Of course not. But that's not why people tune in mm. to QVC either, right? They right. don't tune in because they want to buy something. They want to see what am, what's out there. What am I missing? What can I be educated on? Mm -hmm. And so then if you were to hold a summit or a one-hour session of how to change your skin and you have three different levels like you know mm -hmm. it's like you have a t-zone oily or you have acne or you have bloating issues and you have like this class where you go in and you teach people different mechanisms all sanctified sanctified sanctioned and sanctified yes by holy <laughs> doctors um like what it means to work on your skin from the inside out so somebody's learning something they feel powerful they're not just being sold glossy although that could be a component mm -hmm. of it they're being sold a lifestyle and so all of a sudden you become 
the conveyor of great things in their life. Mm. And if Glossy is a part of that product, then all of a sudden you've educated an audience mm -hmm. to become future buyers. There is a mechanism of tapping into education. Mm. There is a mechanism of tapping into somebody feeling really great. So the dopamine hit of somebody learning something is almost the same as them doing it. Mm. So if you talk in great detail about how you felt after your six mile run down Santa Monica and you went through in every step and you talked about the street lights and then the sweat and you got to the end and you heard, you know, a tribe called Quest playing on a <laughs> boom box down by Muscle Beach and you took a deep breath Literally, and then you walked back. Happened. Exactly, right? <laughs> so I'm feeling it as you're explaining. Mm my dopamine levels are going closer to as if I ran the six miles. So if we know that human to human, we convey in the same way, if you could sit there and walk me through the journey of what it would mean to have skin that I feel great in, that I feel healthy about, that I have all these benefits, the dopamine hit of me changing my life and opening packs of glossy and adding them to my water is just the same as if I'd already bought the product. Now, if you get somebody to that part of their buying journey, they're sold. Mm. They're sold. I'm doing a webinar. I'm so <laughs> It's so funny. I was thinking of it and I was thinking of what it can be. And you just completely affirmed what that could look like. Oh, I love it. So Lori. Gonna yes. Talk, we're going to, we're going to, you're welcome, Chris. Be a part of, <laughs> of Jasmine's your biggest launch ever. Um, and we'll write a testimony. Hey, mm -hmm. yes, girl. Just, yes. Of course. Your, of course. Of course. But actually this. that would be great because you know, while we're not at all saying like, this is the way products should be, I just right. do think it's like a very interesting like space to dwell. But generally speaking, the best fit is going to be if you have a membership, if you have a SaaS offering, mm -hmm. if you have a course, if you have a, a video series, if you have an ebook, like things like that, that's yeah. like, I'm watching something and I can click to buy. We see the, the most powerful conversion metrics by way of education. I love that you even talked about a physical product though, because what I'm learning is being in the, the physical product world, I think there's actually, they're leaving so much on the table, not learning about this world yes. as well, because there's such a beautiful crossover there that is. if we all came together, it would be like actually bananas. Mm -hmm. Like You just so need to prove it. You, you prove, to prove it. I'm going to prove it. And then, you know, it's by 2025, right. you're on podcast talking about this crazy new way that you did something to revolutionize yeah. the way that products are sold. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting. And I think that there's nobody better to lead it than you. Great. Done. 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 So, <laughs> so easy. As if, you don't, as if you don't have a billion things going on right now. But really, but really it's the, it goes back to what the beginning of this podcast, what we were talking about, like making sure that you stay in your skill set and your zone of genius. And yes. truly that is my skill set and zone of genius is learning, like bringing that portion of how I know how to sell. Mm. to a physical product love it so instead that of is. totally trying to rewrite something and like how do how do i even learn how to right do this? like That's how are products me. sold in 2024 yeah, like absolutely. however that is don't do it because you're already behind the curve exactly create the new how way do you sell yeah. it how do you sell things mm -hmm. exactly okay well this was so amazing thank you i Molly. went into some vortex i don't even know i laughed <laughs> i laughed i cried i'm gonna go burn a boat <laughs> You said, I'll give you a match. So, I'll right. give you a match. Um, but if people are interested in signing up yes. for this class because education, jasminestar.com forward slash launch. Okay. Jasminestar.com. Okay. Forward slash launch. launch. We're going to put that in the show notes, you Thank guys. You, We're going to put it everywhere. Um, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming you, on the Lauren. show. I adore you. Oh, you guys, one of the biggest things we can do for Jasmine is to obviously go join this program because it's going to change your life and your business, but also go follow her and let her know what your biggest takeaway was. It's always nice to know who was listening. So what is your yeah. Instagram handle? At Jasmine Star. At Jasmine Star. You can't forget that name, you guys. Yeah. Literally. Okay. Until next time, everyone, earn your happy. Bye-bye.